So, what is inheritance? You might know the English basic definition of it, and um, uh, oh wow, that's not very helpful. <laughs> In programming, however, inheritance is the act of creating a new OOP class and having it inherit functions from another class with a much broader functionality. To demonstrate this for the video, we will make a game about cubes. In this game, there will be a huge variety of cubes, maybe up to a thousand. And they will all do different things based on what type of cube they are. That's the premise. First, we enter Roblox Studio and let's start with making a simple cube. Since this video is about object-oriented programming, we will define a cube class so that when we call this cube.new constructor function, it spawns in a cube. I want to set up the properties of the cube before it spawns in because loading things while the player is playing and letting them see the loads is a huge sin. This setup function will also allow me more flexibility when I create more types of cubes in the future. So how will I now create more types of cubes? Well, simple. I'll do what you subconsciously probably already do when you're using OOP. You probably just don't know you're doing it. I will use inheritance. I will create a new cube class for my new cube type. And this one is called big cube because I want it to be a basic cube, but it's bigger. Now, instead of actually making a new class with its own setup and own spawn functions, we will have the big cube class inherit the original cube class instead. So we can reuse the code. This is the pinnacle of OOP. Never repeat yourself. Using this method, I have also conveniently made three new cube types. The fire cube, the glass cube, and this growing cube. Which all do their own different things, but they all inherit from the original cube class, like the big cube does. Now everything seems fine until now, but now I want to add an icy cube. This will serve as a contrast game element to the fire cube. The fire cube sets you on fire when you touch it, and the icy cube freezes you when you touch it. Wait, since they both do things on touch, why don't I create a superclass called on touch cube, which Fire cube and icy cube can inherit from that has the functionalities of things happening upon touch. Now that should be a new concept for you. The idea that, that there doesn't have to be just one superclass, but instead the hierarchy of inheritance can spread out like a tree in the manner shown in this picture. Now I further made two more cube types, a destructive cube and a moving cube. And they, like before, inherits functionality from the cube class. However, the destructive cube's intended behavior is to destroy any other cube it touches. Touches! Oh! The destructive cube can conveniently inherit functionality from the on-touch cube instead. Now I want my game to evolve and to satisfy my fan base. I'm going to add a intriguing and never before seen cube type, a monster cube. Not only can this cube move, but it destroys any cube upon touching them. We will say that this monster cube is hunting down and eating other cubes. Naturally, we know what we can do. We can make this monster cube class inherit from both destructive cube and moving cube. Since the destructive cube class gives functionality which destroys other cubes upon touching them, and the moving cube class can give the monster cube the functionality to, well, move. So let's... wait... 
How would we possibly do that? Well, with the way Roblox Luau inheritance works, it doesn't allow for multiple inheritances. You can't necessarily attach two meta tables at once. Sure, you could do this, but the solution that's about to be offered to you will render this idea right here stupid. And that's really not the only problem here. You might want to look at the hierarchy tree now. And yeah, that's, that's abhorrent to observe. If you were the one developing this game, it would be at this point that you think to yourself, Roblox Luau inheritance doesn't really allow me to inherit from two superclasses conveniently, and the hierarchical design of my inheritance system has become, quite frankly, absurdly complicated. What if in the future, when I'm making new cubes, this kind of stuff happens again? Won't the hierarchy tree just grow more and more unmanageable? And also, what if in the future, I want to modify the functionality of a cube class for an update? What if I want to change it? Won't all other cube classes that inherit from that superclass also be affected, even though that might not be what I necessarily want? And this, my friends, is the problem with inheritance. The problem of coupling. The fact that each of these classes become so interdependent on each other that they are left no room to change or adapt in future updates. Because changing one class means changing all the other classes. Because all the other classes is that one class. This is a is a relationship inside the concept of inheritance. No, I've had enough of this. This ridiculous complexity for just a game about cubes needs to end. I need to stop using inheritance. But what can I use instead? Oh, okay. Remember how I ended the last segment talking about how inheritance provides an is a relationship between two classes, hence making them intertwined and subject to each other's changes? Well, why don't instead of an is a relationship between the classes, let's make it so that they all have an has a relationship. This can be done using composition. Composition in programming is the act of making just one OOP class have the functionality of many other classes at once instead of many other classes having the functionality of bigger superclasses. Now, what does that mean? Let me demonstrate with our cube game. Instead of each cube class basically becoming extended versions of each other, why not make just the original cube class be composed of different behavior classes? Instead of this onTouch cube class, let's make a class called onTouch behavior so that we can use it to compose the total behavior of the original cube class. And instead of this moving cube class, let's make a class called moving behavior so that we can also use this to compose the total behavior of the original cube class. Now, with composition, it is possible to make our monster cube. We just have to use the original base class and give it the destructive variant of the on-touch behavior and the moving behavior. And with composition, if we happen to want to change any of these behavior classes in the future, they won't affect the other behavior classes just like how the cube classes do to each other. And that's the difference between inheritance and composition, because while inheritance is like a tree, composition is like a Lego build. Instead of structuring object-oriented programming, like the monster cube is both a destructive cube and a moving cube, you should structure it like the monster cube has a destructive on touch behavior and a move it behavior. Thanks for watching.